Welcome back to another video here on the Extreme Weather Team channel. My name is Justin, and welcome back to the video. Again, I said I was going to try to stay on a, a more frequent schedule, um, and I am doing my best to do that for you guys. In today's video, we are going to be talking about tropical Atlantic activity, which is coming soon, the historic western heat wave, which is also coming soon, and Typhoon Hinomnor in the western Pacific, which could be striking the southern Japanese islands later tonight or tomorrow. Again, if you don't know who I am, my name is Justin. I am a 15-year-old in high school. I do my best to provide accurate, no-hype weather information because I feel like it is hard to get that on YouTube nowadays, and it's important that people have access to that, and my channel will be a way to do that. First, let's look at the Atlantic. Here we have ocean heat content. I did not update the map because ocean heat content I do not need to update on a daily basis, but again, just to explain, you have in the... um. In the Caribbean, a lot of high ocean heat content, you have that in the Gulf, you have that in the Western Atlantic, and what ocean heat content is, is heat with depth of water, so again, think of it like um, a hood, and what's happening under the hood, like a hood of a car, you have the hood, but then under that you have all the engines and all of that, so if a hurricane is going over the Caribbean, they have not only the hood, which is the sur uh, sea surface temperatures, which are really hot, but they also have a lot of depth, so that if they stall, if they're moving slowly, they're not going to actually upwell water and weaken. Next, we have shear. I also didn't update this map, since a one-day difference shouldn't mean too much. Um, some minor things have changed, but nothing really too significant. Again, wind shear storms do not want wind shear if they want to intensify. That will shear off cloud tops uh, with height, and that will result in a weakening system. And that could also funnel in dry air, and then you'll have dry air entrainment within a system, and that can be very detrimental to the system. The main reasoning behind why this uh, season has been so dead, as mo most people have noticed, is because of dry air and shear. And again, dry air is looking rather significant too. There's a lot of dry air in the MDR right now and in, uh, say, north of Puerto Rico. But I think once 91L, which I will talk about in a few seconds here, gets towards the uh, north of Puerto Rico, it will be able to start intensifying more quickly and organizing more quickly. Now let's look at the NHC. This is their newest advisory issued uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Tuesday, August 30th, 2022. And you can see that they have three AOIs. They have dropped two AOIs. Number one was 92L. The number two was in the Caribbean moving into the Gulf. Those both had near 0% chances of formation yesterday, so it is no surprise that they removed them with this outlook today. But you can see that there is a subtropical system that could form up in the northern Atlantic with a 10% chance of formation within 48 hours and a 30% chance of formation within five days. There is our main uh, source for the today's video, uh, 91L, which is that red cone marked for a 60% chance of formation within 48 hours and an 80% chance of formation within five days. And finally, their third AOI, which is a tropical wave moving off the coast of Africa, 48 hours, 20% chance, and five days, a 40% chance. So all three colors here on the map for you guys to look at. Now let's go move into the models and what they are showing for tropical activity. To modeling for 91L and other systems within the Atlantic, I want to show you what's going on with 91L in real-time satellite and infrared imagery. So you can see that uh, from this time yesterday, there was very little convection, very little deep convection, and the system looked to be pretty much infused with dry air and did not look great. But today, you can actually see that there is a lot of funneling uh, deep convective bursts to the southwest of the the uh, center, center of the system, sorry, and the center of the system is about right here, though it's not a defined low-level circulation yet, of course, it is right there, and you can see a lot of deep convection to the southwest of the system, and uh, really just the south of the system, and that could start to curl into more of the center region, it is moving to the e uh, to the north uh, in the direction that the system is moving, so I am expecting that you will probably start to see more deep convection due to these really significant, actually, convective bursts. And another reason why uh, convection may be weighted to the uh, south of the system is due to some um, northeasterly shear, and that could keep convection kind of weighted on the south of the system. That's another effect of shear. You won't get more um, uh, circular or 
um, rounded areas of convection around the center. I'm looking for this specific word, but I don't want to take too much time looking for that word. And um, I'll just put it in more layman's term, I, I guess. Now, with that said, let's look at the uh, forecasting for this system. First, going to be taking a look at the GFS model. I usually like to start with the with this one and end with the European model. Um, and you can see here is Invest 91L. It has it currently at 1,009 millibars, which is a reasonable intensity estimate for the time being. And we're going to move forward in our hours here. It stays around that intensity, tries to develop it due to, in, uh, due to some shear and dry air. It's unlikely to develop, I think, within 48 hours. Um, and you can see it continues to struggle to develop within the first 80, 90 hours, but then it starts to really develop once again, it gets north of Puerto Rico. You have to remember that the dry air and the shear kind of stops right around here on the GFS, so it's going to be starting here, and within that whole region, from here to that pink line I just drew, there's going to be dry air and shear, and it will not be able to intensify, but then once it gets past that, past here, it will likely be able to intensify, and it will probably curve out the sea as um, the GFS model has continuously showed, but let's just see if it follows that track I just drew. But you can see now within 1,000, uh, or one, sorry, 1,108 hours, uh, 1,003 millibars, and continuing to move in a northerly direction. And down to 999 millibars again once it gets north of Puerto Rico, um, north of Jamaica, that area, north of really all of those islands out in the Caribbean. And 120 hours, it's really starting to intensify now, probably near tropical storm strength. And yeah, you can see it's taking a bit farther of an Easter tr uh, easterly track than I drew, which does make sense um, due to the, if there is a weaker high pressure system out in the open Atlantic, let me draw that real quick. If there's a weaker high pressure system out in this region, then it will be able to move like this. However, if there's stronger high pressure, it would probably start to move further west, but as we can see, that is not the case with this system, at least on this model. And you can see now within 156 hours, probably now into hurricane intensity, if not major hurricane intensity, but I really don't want to throw that out there because that would be a stretch at best with what the models are showing. Um, and it really would just be hyping it up if I said major hurricane, major hurricane, you know, hurricane, uh, hurricane Danielle or whatever you want to throw out. And only a few models are really showing that, and it would just be straight uh, BS, honestly, if I did that, and I'm not going to do that. But I think Tropical Storm Danielle is definitely a reasonable possibility for the time being. And let's move past that. You can now see our system is way up in the northern Atlantic. Let's look at the subtropical system that I mentioned earlier in the video. And you can see right here it is around 144 hours, and that's why there is low chances within... Um, 48 hours as compared to five days because the system will probably form within five days as opposed to 48 hours again due to shear and some other circumstances surrounding it. I, I will be honest I haven't looked much into that system. I have been focused on 91L and some other things that I am going to talk about later in this video but um Let's look at the subtropical system together, I suppose. And you can see that it's starting to move, it's starting to intensify, but it's not really getting that strong. Reasonable possibility. I don't think this thing would be super intense. I, I think maybe overdoing it here with the GFS. That's a little far northeast to have um, a tropical storm, if not weak hurricane. Um, but again, that is kind of just GFS fantasy land doing its best thing over there. And you can see the, the MDR and the Caribbean and the Gulf remain rather quiet for the rest of the period, as it has been with this season. So no surprises there. Anyways, let's go look at the icon and European model. Look at the Euro. And I'm just going to quickly go through this because I want to keep the video as short as I possibly can, but a similar situation to the GFS, at least with 91L, except the Euro actually keeps it. Again, I showed you last night that this was the low-end solution. It remains the low-end solution, surprisingly. I thought it would uptrend once again, but it decided really not to, and it doesn't even develop the system whatsoever, which I think, in all honesty, that is quite unlikely, 
I think development of the system will occur. I don't think it's just going to be the Euro solution where it continues to weaken significantly throughout its progress and its life cycle. But I mean, it's a possibility and it has, it's a model, it's worth noting, it's worth giving some merit at least. But really, the odds are stacked against the Euro solution for now. We're also going to look at our subtropical system up here. Our 87 here is our subtropical system and 1,002 millibars if we continue to move it through very different track as opposed to the icon in GFS with that system um, it gets quite strong actually um, so there's very little confidence regarding that system very little confidence regarding intensity but even if it were to develop there is almost full certainty that that would be purely an out to sea storm so there's no land impacts with that one whatsoever now let's look into a more important part of the video, if you will, the upcoming heat wave in California and really everywhere in the West, because this heat wave, um, again, I say I don't like the hype stuff up and I'm not hyping this up, but this heat wave could be significant, if not historic for this time of year. The more significant and potentially dangerous part of this video, um, I know I said I don't like the hype stuff up, and I said this in the last clip, but this heat wave for California, for Arizona, for Nevada, for um, even western Utah could be exceptionally significant. I'm talking record-breaking temperatures, not only for this, uh, the month of September, easily record-breaking for the month of September, but also even in some areas record-breaking for any day. And I'm not just taking that from my opinion. I'm actually taking that directly from the area forecast discussion out of Los Angeles, California, and I will show that later in the video as well. But let's look. So this is the 18Z GFS run, the time for when uh, this frame will actually be. So from when you're looking at is up here. Again, this is Tuesday at 18Z um, so at uh, August 30th. Sorry, sometimes I get caught up in my words there. So let's move forward. You can see we're past Tuesday, so let's move straight into Wednesday. 60, this is early morning, and look at this, early morning, very early morning, already 81 degrees. Now, it's going to cool off overnight, again, 12Z is even later in the day, or sorry, later in the night, so it's going to be pretty cool, I would hope. But still, 78 degrees out in the desert of Southern California, still 94 degrees. Northern California is a bit cooler, but that will not last whatsoever. Um, now let's move into the day. So 18, 21, we're really into the day. Zero Z is the hottest point of the day. Um, and you can see max temperatures across California are wild. Out in Las Vegas, 107 degrees. Um, let's see, out in... Los Angeles, GFS has 98 degrees, Santa Clarita 102, Palm Springs 109, um, Fresno 109, Bakersfield 108. I mean, this is what I'm talking about, guys. Over 100 degrees in many areas of California, and this is the only Wednesday. It says Thursday at 0Z, Thursday at 0Z is actually Wednesday in the afternoon slash evening. Um, and let's keep moving forward. So we're now into Friday at 0Z, and it cools down a bit on Friday according to the G, uh, GFS, still extremely hot, 10, 103 in San Bernardino, 109 in Vegas, um, 106 in Sacramento, 110 in Bakersfield, I think you get the point, but let's move forward because it gets even more extreme. Now we are in to Friday, or, oh, Sorry, <laughs> I was in Wednesday, The yesterday was Thursday, now we are in Friday. See, I just explained that 0Z was the day before and then I got caught up in that myself. Isn't that funny? You should take your own advice. Now, 114 in Fresno, 113 in Bakersfield, 91 degrees in Los Angeles, 107 in La uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, and 104 in Sacramento. Let's keep moving forward, because the weekend is when it really starts to get incredible. Um, and we are now Saturday, 94 once again in Los Angeles, 102 in Santa Clarita, 107 in Las Vegas, 111 up in uh, rural Northern California. And I'm just going to keep going forward. Sunday is uh, Sunday and Monday will probably be the hottest days, and look at 
this. Okay, actually, GFS has Sunday not being the hottest day for Southern California. Um, I'll show you the euro and the contrast that those two have, but 116 to 118 degrees on the euro in a lot of this whole region up here, the central and northern California valleys, and along with the desert, uh, well over 100 degrees in the Southern California desert, no surprise there. And then let's finally move into Monday, which should be the last day of the extreme heat, 96 degrees in Los Angeles with, look at this, 120 on the GFS in this general region right here, in the whole Northern California Valley being over 110 degrees. Look at that. That is incredible. And we are now going to look at the Euro Now we are looking at the European model, and the European model is actually the higher-end model in this scenario, which is strange because the GFS is usually the highest-end model in really every weather situation. Just a funny weather joke. If you understand it, you understand it. If you don't, you don't. But um, let's move forward. So again, we are now on Tuesday uh, Tuesday at 0Z, already there, we're just gonna skip past that, we're now, um, Wednesday, okay, this is Wednesday afternoon, 97 degrees in Metro Los Angeles, 111 in Palm Springs, 106 in Fresno, over 110 in the southern, in far southern California, near the border of Mexico and California, look at that, but let's keep moving forward, because it gets even more extreme, you now have 100 degrees on Wednesday in Los Angeles, 111 in Santa Clarita, 108 in San Bernardino, and let's keep moving forward. Ninety nine degrees in Los Angeles, one oh six in the Central California, one oh eight Fresno, one oh six in Bakersfield. And let's keep moving forward, guys, because we're now getting into the hottest day on the European model. Oh, sorry, this is 18Z. Let me move to 12Z to, to get a longer range. Okay, guys, give me one sec. Just hang in there with me. Uh, okay, so here we go. Sorry about that. So this is now Sunday morning. We're now moving into Sunday afternoon, and <laughs> look at this Insanity, really. It, it, that's the only way to refer to it. 107 degrees in Metro Los Angeles, 110 in San Bernardino, 111 in Santa Clarita, 107 in Central California Valleys, 111 in Fresno, 110 in Bakersfield. And I, I wanted, I do want to say that these are just numbers given by the European model. These are not set in stone. These are not 100% going to be the exact temperatures that you see if you live in Los Angeles. And I actually, I doubt that we'll get to 107 here in LA. Um, but it is a possibility, it is the European model, and one thing is for sure that even if it doesn't get to 107, 100 degrees is basically locked in for this area, and it, this is an extreme heat wave for this time of year. And now let's move finally into the last day of the heat wave, which will be Monday. Once again, 105 degrees in Metro LA, 110 in Santa Clarita, over 115 to 120 in the central and northern California valleys, and... I mean, can you tell me how much white is on this map and how much gray is on this map? For September, you'd think we're in June. Anyways, guys, let's move into what's causing this heat wave and the National Weather Service Los Angeles area for of this heat wave is what is going on? Why is it so hot? It is September. We're barely in summer anymore. What is this event? And, and I am going to tell you what is going on right now. So you can see that we have this ridge over Southern California, <laughs> Southern California, talk about all of the West, and this ridge is over in this general region to the west of the blue line I just drew, and you can see it just starts to sit over us and intensify as we go through the weekend, as we go through the end of the week, and as we go over our Labor Day weekend, and I do want to stress that the Labor Day weekend will probably be the hottest period of this whole event, so if you do go out with your family, if you are doing anything with them, if you're having, you know, your barbecue, please drink water, please, you know, stay inside an air-conditioned area for extended periods of time, because this heat wave is no joke. Um, out uh, The whole summer, we have not seen anything like this. This has actually been a relatively cold summer for us, and to think that this is going to happen in September is pretty incredible, pretty insane, and please just take this seriously, because this is a major heat wave, and 
Uh, heat can be underestimated. Um, Heat-related injury, heat-related uh, strokes, things like that, those are va- rather common once it gets this hot, and this is something very serious, especially over a major holiday like it is. Um, and yeah, you can really just see this ridge sticking around, intensifying over Labor Day weekend. Not much to explain there. The darker reds, those equal the hotter temperatures, and you can just see that. Yeah, let's move on to the area forecast discussion. National Weather Service in Los Angeles, California. I am just going to quickly read through a couple of their key points and show you that it is not only me saying that this could be an extreme heat wave, but it is also the professionals here in Los Angeles saying it as well. Now, I'm just going to skip some lines here. This is the technical stuff that I've already explained, but let's see this. This heat may be record-breaking and will produce a very high risk of heat illness. Like I said, heat illness is a major risk this weekend, this Labor Day weekend, and um, it could be record-breaking, if not will be record-breaking. I mean, for September, it will clearly be record-breaking. It's really all-time records, which we'll see if they are broken. And um, the abnormally long-duration heat wave remains on target. Excessive heat warnings are in effect for really all of Southern California and Central California. This is a dangerous situation due to the hot daytime conditions, abnormally warm nights, and length of the event. The risk of heat illness is high for most people. Then this is another key point that I want to note. They do say, I believe it is somewhere in here. Alrighty. Sorry. Okay. Um, Another big jump in temperatures tomorrow by around 10 degrees. Calendar records may fall like woodland hills. Um, Even if uh, there is some cooling, it will remain very hot, while mountains and interior valleys should trend up from Wednesday. Overnight lows will increase as well, generally 5 to 10 degrees above normal. And then, finally, I will just show you what they are saying for all-time records, because this is pretty astounding, really. All-time record high temperatures would break if that, referring to uh, if temperatures end up being 5 or so degrees higher than currently advertised, all-time high temperatures would break if that ended up happening, especially across uh, Burbank, Woodland Hills, and Paso Robles. All those areas are north of Los Angeles. And again, this is an extremely serious event. This is an extremely serious situation, and this is not something that anyone should be underestimating because this could really affect people. Here is Typhoon. Uh, Again, I'm just going to call it HIN. It's spelled H-I-N-N-A-M-N-O-R. But because I know I will mess that up, I'm just going to call it Typhoon HIN. Super Typhoon now, 160 mile per hour winds heading for the southern Japanese islands, not the Japanese mainland, but just the islands to the south of them. Dangerous situation because this uh, storm will probably stall and cause torrential rainfall, flooding, and that sort. It is going through an eyewall replacement cycle right now, which is why it is not looking as impressive. And you might be thinking, 160 miles per hour? No way. Look at that thing. And I would honestly agree. Earlier, it was 160 plus miles per hour for sure. But now it is definitely starting to weaken as it goes through another eyewall replacement cycle. That's our update on Typhoon uh, Hinomnor, and um, I guess we're going to wrap up the video there. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me today in my talk about the weather. I will see you in the next video. If you like these videos, please subscribe, like the video, and share the video. I would greatly appreciate that as we are trying to get this channel as big as possible. But uh, once again, I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.